Hey guys, what is up? It is Biff from Fearless Mods and it has been two weeks since we got this beauty painted. So it is time to go ahead and finally wash it and get to wet sanding it, buffing and polishing it to see if we can get that outer surface to go from matte to a nice glossy shine. So stay with us and let's see how well this uh, works out. It's washed, now it's time to go ahead and get started. Um, getting ready to wet sand. I'm pretty much gonna do the flat surfaces that are not up next to hard complex curves and things like that. Um, and then we'll go from there. Some parts of it turned out great, like these pillars. Some parts are matte. So the objective here mainly is to just get the majority of these big flat mats, matte type areas um, buffed down to more of a gloss. So we'll start with a thousand grit sandpaper and then move up to 1500 and see how we're able to do that. Should have plenty of clear coat on it, but I definitely don't want to sand through it. What I'm going to do is take a towel, soak it with water and just keep it setting on the surface where I'm working so that it stays continually wet. Okay, the uh, first hack had a little bit of the sanding here and it's looking uh, pretty good. You can see there's some areas there where we still have just a little bit of the, the uh, misted, like uh, pitting type look. So we'll get that a little bit back here in the corner. Uh, most of it looks pretty good, except up there where I'm reaching towards the middle. Um, probably gonna have to hit some of that again. And then a little bit right up here at this edge, you can see where I haven't quite got that real good yet. So I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on here uh, when I'm doing this. I'm just kind of because with the imperfections of you know the hand not being flat, it's, it helps me get over the curves. But then again, I don't want to burn through any of the corners. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. I'm just kind of letting the sandpaper do the job, keeping it wet, and uh, just kind of lightly going over it. And you can hear the difference. You know how smooth that is? Hear how that's not? It's because that still has the texture. The thing to keep in mind here is that um, it's easy to get deceived because with the water on it, it looks beautiful because that's kind of taking the place of your clear coat. But make no mistake, you're sanding it. And so the top is a good indication. You are dulling the surface. So don't be suckered into getting into areas where you can't get with your buffer um, because you are gonna have to buff this smooth again and give it the shine. Okay, so there's a couple areas where I'm gonna be starting to sand close to some stuff that I don't wanna damage. So I am gonna put some tape around the lights, um, some of the trim in certain areas that I don't wanna get uh, with the sandpaper. Uh, it's going pretty good. I did notice a spot right up here where it looked like I was starting to sand through. It's kind of a light blue stripe right there. Um, I haven't sanded through. For some reason, I didn't get good paint coverage right there. Um, and it's lighter. Don't know why, it was on black underneath, so it makes no sense to me. But everything I've sanded feels much smoother, um, so it should buff out real nice. All right, so that might be a wrap for today. Got quite a bit of sanding done. It's not a fast process, but I got the, the top, the trunk, and then both sides all the way up to the core, the uh, fender. So I just gotta do the fender and the hood and parts of the bumper, and then we'll be ready to start buffing. Good progress today. We'll pick it up again tomorrow and keep on going. All right guys, another day here, and time to get back to sanding. Uh, I've gone ahead and sanded this front fender um, so 
really all I got to do is get the, the spots on the bumper um, and the hood. So fenders, other fender, hood, bumper, and then we're ready to go to the 1500. All right, now we are going to jump in with the 1500. Give it a quick sanding over, wash it, and we'll be ready to buff and polish. Okay, let's get this washed. All right, so we're gonna get ready to start uh, doing some buffing here. So I got this smart brand from Finish Masters. Uh, I'm gonna start with the wool uh, buffing pad. SBP 754. Got a backing plate here of Velcro to pop it on there. And this um, Pure Compound Plus is what I'm starting with, um, as recommended by the guys at Finish Master. Then I'll move on to a foam pad, which I'll show you, and a polish. I've done a little bit of extra taping along the edges of some seams so that it, when I'm buffing the, the hood first, I won't come off the edge of it and burn the edges of the other part and then I will raise this up and be able to come back and get these. So um, probably gonna start with the hood first and the top of the car in the trunk, work it like that and then start to work my way around. Yes, yes, yes. This is one happy biff right here. This is looking fantastic. And that's just the cutting compound. Whew. Baby, 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 looks so good. Okay, so because this is already taped, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just polish this and be done with it. That way I can pull the tape off and move on. I, I will do the top and the trunk and maybe work my way forward. So I'm gonna stick with the buffing um, other parts of the car currently and then we'll come back to that. Trunk's looking pretty. Time to start moving on to the uh, quarters and work our way up one side. Or I think we go ahead and polish. That way I can remove the tape and get everything else on the way forward. All right, let's see how this goes. It's looking so good. Good guy. That is gonna be it for tonight. Um, I'm gonna take a break, finish it up tomorrow, I think. Um, quarter panels, doors, fenders. That's all that remain. Oh, and a little bit on the wing. Let me take you a walk around, man. This is looking phenomenal. Well, you'll notice, uh, obviously, between the sanded part and the polished part, a huge difference. But of course, that's because it's sanded. Now, I will say, so that's not bad. Some good reflections in there, some decent. But you're gonna see some scratches. Um, I could see them. You could see them over in here a little bit. You can see some of those scratches, uh, and you're still gonna see. You can definitely see it. Um, well, there in the light reflection, you can even see it, right? So there's still a little bit of the orange peeliness. Um, I didn't sand it to perfect because it's not intended to be a perfect paint job. It's a garage paint job. Um, it's intended to look really good. And I think it does. What I probably could have sanded a little bit more is over in here, you can see a little bit of that on that light there at the right. Some of the, uh, where it was misted on. I could have uh, wet sanded that a little bit more. So that part of the hood, which was really bad to begin with uh, for the misting, still has a little bit of the remnants. Um, I, that's me being uber critical. It is so much better than it was when we pulled it in here. Yeah, you can really see that spot on the hood now. <laughs> I might hit that again with some more wet sanding. We'll see. See how I feel tomorrow. The pillars, the top. Um, look at that reflection. It looks like I have a garage door laying on top of the thing. Uh, it, it's, it's deceiving because it's dark out and so it hides a lot of stuff. But um, everything's looking good. You can see scratches on the, on the trunk still but it's shiny 
and I think in the daylight it's going to look phenomenal and we'll continue it tomorrow. All right guys, it's go to work time. You know the drill. Since this is sat for a day and kind of hardened up a little bit, I'm going to, when I put it on the wheel, I'm going to just take a little bit of a, like a screwdriver to it uh, while it's running, just kind of loosen that up a little bit. So one thing that's interesting, I'll just uh, talk you through here. This is a Griots or a Griots, I'm not sure how you say it, polishing wheel system that I bought. And so it does not, you'll notice when this stops, it's not just spinning it. Well, there it's spinning it a lot, but it's, it's, it's very vib vibrational and you can almost hold on to it to keep it from spinning. So a little bit different system. Hopefully it uh, seems to be working all right uh, with this buffing and polishing compound. So we'll just keep at it. And we've had a fail. So maybe my orbital uh, freaking polisher is too hard on this smart stuff. Didn't quite make it through a whole car before it vibrated itself, uh, the Velcro pad off. We have that door and this quarter panel left to go with the buffing compound. They'll probably replace it for me. We'll see. Might have to run down to finish master tomorrow. But that doesn't stop us from moving on to polishing of everything else. Let's see what we can do to get this baby polished. For the buffing compound, I had this speed set at about four um, to four and a half. This says for um, correcting four to five. So I had it on about a four for the last one there. And then waxing two to three. So I'll put it down here at uh, two and a half and I'll bump it up to three if I need to. This car is the Sofa King because that is Sofa King smooth. Alright guys, I am seeing some sunshine on here for the first time, so it gives me a chance to see some of those hazier areas that I might be missing otherwise. So I'm going to uh, definitely buff and polish the left rear door because my uh, I got the new wheel and the quarter panel and the side of the bumper, but then I will come back and re-hit the trunk and maybe a little bit of the hood and some of the right side doors I'm seeing where the sun's hitting them might need a little more um, buffing, polishing, done. Okay, so the trunk is polished, time to put the wing on. Oh, oh, no. Sun's starting to set, so it's starting to look really good, as usual. Uh, I've been having trouble with the reverse lines on my backup camera. Uh, trouble because they're not even there. So I uh, was doing a little bit of checking around today and on the Nasiak forum, I did finally find what I was looking for. So because I trunk swapped this from a 15 or from a 17 to a 15, they actually have different cameras. So I'm gonna show you here the different cameras, the different part numbers. Um, the 17 has an N on it, at least on mine, and the 15 has an A. Um, different part numbers. Both of these have different uh, line patterns. It looks like the 17 has the solid ones and the 15 has the, the little dashed ones. Um, um, but other than that, I don't know that there's much of a difference. What I haven't been able to bring up is the any kind of the little noodle line that shows you your intended path. I'm not sure if the 17s uh, even had that. Uh, if they do, comment below, let me know. I've, uh, I've not driven one that hasn't been trunk swapped, uh, at least not since this was a concern where I was actually paying attention. All right guys, the thing is practically done. I'm not going to wrap it tonight though because I want to clean it back up. Uh, the wheels, give it another wash and let you see it in the sunlight. 
so that we can call this a wrap. Got some damages here and there. I'll walk you through all that stuff, but wow, this is phenomenal. What a transformation. A beautiful, beautiful car. I'm gonna go eat. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, hey, here we are. We've got the STI buffed and polished. Um, it's got some extra cleanup I still need to do because there's still a lot of that residue um, that I need to come along with the brush and do the detailing, get all this kind of stuff out from the handles and everything like that. But it looks uh, absolutely phenomenal. I love the look of this thing. I still need to put the badging on. Um, the back and that's just loosely put on there right now for looks but uh, but it turned out great it buffed out extremely well how glossy and shiny it looks in most places the roughness is mostly gone you can still see a little bit right there on that part of the fender I put some extra elbow grease into the buffing wheel right there with the compound to get it as good as I could but uh, uh, it just everything looks phenomenal everything came out great so there's a few things there's some things i will worry about and some things i won't for instance down here where the paint reaction was it's kind of dark right here but i'm not too concerned about it right now not extremely noticeable um but there are other areas where i will continue to give it a little more attention and those happen to be where I let the wing get into the back here. So I'm gonna to have to do some spot repairs there when I get the, uh, the um, small airbrush ready to go. Um, the lines back here just look gorgeous. Everything looks so good. But here's the ugly one right here. I had let this rub against something and it had rubbed through the paint. And so when I was buffing it with the compound yesterday, I was checking to see if it was mark like a paint mark like it got against a white wall or something and as i buffed it it just started ripping paint off all the way down the thing so i'm going to have to work on that um, it looks much worse than it is but it's still one of those things i know it's there and it's very frustrating so i'm going to have to tend to that here this little nick i have no idea how that happened other than if there was some trash in the paint and the buffing wheel pulled it out there are things that you notice with your bodywork that are, you can see the waviness in there. It feels extremely smooth to the hand, but that wouldn't be a show quality repair there. But if you remember what that door looked like, it looks fantastic. Also, you see these little pits here that have a little bit of the uh, polish in them. That's because those are little spots in the Bondo and the glazing putty or whatever where I didn't fill the little voids again hard to see all of those when it's in primer but everything shows up remarkably well when it's in paint and it's glossy there are some more repairs right up front here you can kind of see a little bit of waviness to them uh, as well thought they were smooth they're good enough door dings that you miss so there's a door ding right there and there are a couple more here and here. These are things that you just, you gotta be thorough and go over this thing and look it all the way over. There was a sanding mishap that I had right here on that fender. You see a little bit of the red that I started to get through there where I just got a little bit too overzealous on the edge of that, hitting it with the sandpaper, or maybe I didn't get thorough enough coating um, on the paint around that edge. But these are all things that you kind of learn. You can see a little bit of red right here. I should have painted around the edge of this a little bit better. I mean, again, I'm being uber critical and I'm telling you everything that I know is wrong with this paint job. Um, these are things that I would pay more attention to next time. Maybe give it a little more uh, care and attention. Hopefully be a little more successful. But I can tell you that without a doubt, um, I got a good deal here because for the price of probably a Mako paint job, I'm guessing I've got about $2,500 in this. That includes my painting equipment and you know my compressor, my sprayers, everything, versus getting a Mako job where they wouldn't even have gone through everything I did to do the color change. For the money, I ended up with a better paint job and some practice and skill, which is the whole reason I got this car in the beginning. Um, I ended up with some equipment so that now I can continue painting if I would like to when you look at purely just the paint materials for this car alone 
I think we're in the neighborhood of about thirteen to fifteen hundred dollars, probably thirteen hundred dollars for paint, reducer, um, clear coat, and activator and sealer, uh, all those kinds of things. So all in all, I think the Phyllis Mods STI turned out extremely well, and uh, I couldn't be happier. All I got to do now is detail it, make it look pristine, and uh, and then start moving on to the mods. I got some pictures here where I parked it next to the car that I took the uh, the VIN from so that I could color match. And uh, I think his looks a little more uh, brighter blue than mine, which surprises me. Um, but just a touch, just a touch. Two very beautiful cars, it's a great color. Very happy with what I went with. Now is as good a time as any to go watch the series again, man. I know it's been two years and, you know, Chris and uh, Sam Crack and, and Goon Squad, these guys, they all do them in a matter of weeks or a month tops. Uh, it took two years, but now you got a whole series of videos. Go start at the beginning and remember what this thing used to look like. It was ugly. We've come a long way. So again, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care.